Looking for a budget-friendly TV that doesn't skimp on screen size or performance? Well, Hisense's U7H line might just fit that bill. But before you take the plunge, there are a few important things you need to know. Now, before we dive into the review, a quick disclaimer here. Hisense did send the 85 inch version of their U7H to me for review, but they didn't pay me anything or tell me what to say in this video. This is my honest and unbiased opinion and review of the Hisense U7H as if I'd pay for it with my own money. And the folks over at Hisense will be seeing this video for the first time right along with you guys. So with that out of the way, let's dive in and get started. Now I wanna start off talking about standard dynamic range or SDR content for things like standard 1080p Blu-rays or video games that don't support HDR. The U7H looked great out of the box once I switched it off of the default vivid mode and into one of the more accurate picture modes like theater night or filmmaker mode. Now black level detail was fantastic from the get go. And while the U7H won't give you the deep inky blacks you'd expect from something like an OLED panel, well, they're honestly no slouch here either. And that's largely due to the 128 dimming zones used on the 85 inch version of the U7H. Now, speaking of dimming zones, you do have four different options for adjusting the intensity of those local dimming zones, off, low, medium, and high. Now, for the majority of testing for this review, I simply left it on high, as I found that provided the best experience in my living room, regardless if I was watching something in standard dynamic range or HDR. I also wanna mention that I didn't notice a ton of blooming here either, unless I was looking at basically a bright white test pattern on an all black screen. Now in real world content, I hardly, if ever, if I'm being completely honest, notice much blooming at all. For those looking for the most accurate picture out of the box, you may wanna go in and double check that the automatic light sensor is disabled under the backlight setting. Now, for some reason it defaulted to on in quite a few of the picture modes, including the filmmaker mode, which, I thought was kind of strange, and that caused the picture to appear dimmer most of the time when that setting is enabled. Colors were also spot on, if not a touch too cool for my liking. Now, more than likely, the U7H could benefit from a full calibration from a professional calibrator. And you do have plenty of options in the menu on the U7H for that very thing. But out of the box, I think most people will be more than pleased with the picture quality in SDR. Switching over to HDR was sort of a different story at first though. Now, it's not that the U7H had trouble in a bright room here or looked overly bad or anything. It's just that the default settings with both HDR 10 and Dolby Vision picture modes just, well, honestly, really don't do this set justice. Now, my main issue here were the raised blacks, and it's something that I made mention of in my unboxing video for the Hisense U7H. Things looked pretty washed out with brightness set at the default of 50 to the point where both my wife and I thought that, well, something might be wrong with the Hisense U7H that was sent to us. Now this applied to any HDR source I fed the display, be it from the TV's own internal streaming apps like Netflix or Disney Plus, 4K Blu-ray discs, or even HDR video games. They all exhibited this strange washed out picture issue. The fix for this is pretty simple enough. Just drop brightness from the default of 50 down to 47. Now, problem solved for the most part, I guess, though this can result in a small amount of shadow detail being lost in certain scenes, so it's not completely ideal. Now, I would love for Hisense to address this because if someone were to go in to like Best Buy or something and pick this setup and not know anything about it or this washed out picture issue in HDR, they might get home and set it up and not have the best experience out of the box and either have to resort to the internet to solve their problem, or just return the set and go with something else from potentially another brand. And I don't think that's anything that Hisense wants. Now, once I made that brightness tweak, I do feel like the U7H really came to life with HDR content and showed what this set is truly capable of, in my opinion. Now, HDR10 and Dolby Vision content looks awesome. I mean, I might throw that word around a few times in this video, but it's awesome. Uh, the blacks, like an SDR, were deep, 
and excellent. And the added punch of the extra peak brightness and color volume that comes with HDR was awesome. <laughs> I was really struck with just how bright the display can get with HDR content. Now, bright parts of the image, like the glint of the sun on a windshield in Mad Max Fury Road, really do pop off the screen in almost a 3D kind of way, as do the colors in that movie as well. The overall peak brightness hits around 1000 nits on the U7H, which helps sell those really bright highlights in movies and games. Now, is it the brightest display around? I'm not at all. I'm not even claiming that it is, but without having a display right next to this one to compare it to, well, the overall peak brightness and HDR content still impressed me a lot. As with standard dynamic range content, I do recommend switching out of the default picture mode into something a bit more accurate. Now, for this, I recommend switching to HDR theater for HDR 10 and HDR 10 plus content and Dolby Vision Dark for Dolby Vision content, both with their brightness dropped from 50 to 47. Now, overall here, the U7H looks fantastic with any movie or content I threw at it, especially HDR content after tweaking the brightness. The Hisense U7H definitely impresses here, especially at this price point, considering you can grab the 85 inch version of the U7H for around 1800 bucks. Now, obviously the smaller screen sizes are even more affordable. So if you don't need or want something as big as the 85 incher that was sent to me, then well, your wallet's gonna take less of a beating. As far as gaming features, the U7H ticks most of the boxes one would want from a gaming display. 4K and 120 hertz support, variable refresh rate with FreeSync, auto low latency mode, a game info setting that shows you what frame rate you're getting. I'm honestly, a pretty decent set of features with only a few things not included, which I'll talk about in a moment. I tested quite a few games on both the Xbox Series X and PS5. Image quality was great in both SDR and HDR when in the display's game picture modes. Now, like mentioned previously, you'll need to drop brightness down to 47 from 50 to eliminate the raised blacks in all HDR content, even in game mode. But doing that once is all you really need to do and you'll be good to go from then on. Now the same picture quality experience I had with movies was echoed here in both SDR and HDR for games. Deep blacks with those same nice punchy highlights in HDR. I didn't notice any major differences when switching from say filmmaker mode or theater to game or game HDR picture modes. Everything from the black levels and color temperatures seemed to be identical across each of the picture modes I tested. I also didn't detect any issue with lag or latency, though <laughs> admittedly, I don't play multiplayer games and tend to stick to mostly single player or co-op games when reaction speeds don't really need to be instant. Now, with that said, uh, there was no noticeable delay between button presses on the controller and corresponding actions on the screen. Things seem pretty much instantaneous all the time. Now, Artings lists the input lag at 4K and 60 Hertz at 15.6 milliseconds for the Hisense U7H, and that drops down to just 7.6 milliseconds when we're talking about 4K at 120 Hertz pretty impressive stuff. If we're just talking about 60 FPS here, then things were excellent across the board. Games looked and played great, and I don't really have any complaints at all. Like I said, image quality was fantastic, and I couldn't really detect any input lag or latency issues. Things just worked flawlessly at 60 frames per second. However, switching over to 4K at 120 frames per second, things get a bit more interesting. Essentially feeding the U7H a 4K 120 Hertz signal drops the resolution to half on the horizontal axis. So basically what this means is, instead of getting full 4K resolution, which is 3840 by 2160, the U7H is reducing that down to 1920 by 2160, then upscaling it back up to 3840 by 2160. Now this means that the picture quality can come across a bit blurry when using 4K at 120 Hertz with or without variable refresh rate enabled. Depending on how far away you sit from your screen will also determine just how noticeable this kind of thing is to you. Now, some people may never notice it at all and others might notice it right away. Now, honestly, this is pretty difficult to film with a camera. So I instead took a few photos of some test patterns played from an Xbox Series X set to output 4K and 120 Hertz and got in pretty close to show you guys what I mean. Now, these test patterns should have pretty distinct separation between the white horizontal lines and the black lines in between. 
But as you can see, the white lines sort of bleed over into the black lines on the horizontal test pattern. Now this is the halving of the resolution seen in action here. And you'll notice if we look at test patterns with vertical lines, well, there's no bleed over. Things are separated like they should be. But thankfully there is a workaround for this issue. If we send the U7H a 4K and 120 Hertz signal and go into the advanced settings under picture settings, all the way at the bottom, we can find a little setting called HDMI input optimization. Now by default, it's set to picture quality optimization, but switching this over to text clarity optimization unlocks the full 3840 by 2160 resolution at 120 Hertz. There's no halving of the resolution at all. If we take a look at those same test patterns from before, we see that the black and white lines in the horizontal test patterns now look as they should with absolutely zero bleed over. I double checked the vertical pattern as well and confirmed no issues there either. Now, after making this one change, the image no longer takes on a slightly blurry appearance. And with the addition of VRR, the frame rate ends up looking and feeling buttery smooth in both SDR and HDR modes. Now, outside of this 4K 120 Hertz issue, the only other minor gripes I have in regards to gaming features is a lack of official HGIG support and Dolby Vision for gaming support, neither of which are deal breakers at this price point, honestly. Technically, there is support for Dolby Vision for gaming, but it's limited to just 60 frames per second, no 120 frames per second here. Now, considering less than a handful of games officially support Dolby Vision on either the Series X or PC at the time of this video, well, I don't really consider this to be an issue. If you guys are interested in a settings guide walking you through what I'd recommend for both game and movie picture settings, let me know in the comment section below. In regards to sound quality, it's really just meh. I mean, it, it gets the job done and works in a pinch, but I'd highly recommend getting a halfway decent sound bar or going with a two channel setup at a minimum. Now, most of the time I found the speakers to be a bit on the tinny side, regardless of how much I tried to EQ them. The different sound modes do change the sound profile a bit for each one selected, but in all honesty, I couldn't find one that suited either my ears or my wife's ears. Like I said, the speakers work in a pinch, but in all honesty, that's about all they can do. As far as app support and smart features go, this has Google TV built right in. So if you're familiar with the interface on something like an Nvidia Shield TV Pro, for instance, well, then you'll be right at home here. I tested a variety of apps with the U7H connected to my Wi-Fi network and never had any quality or buffering issues with any of them. The quality was identical to what I get out of my Apple 4K TV or Nvidia Shield TV Pro. So no worries there in that regard. Something I also wanna mention is that the YouTube app does support HDR, which is a great way to get some demo content on the TV up and running pretty much right after you set things up. So you can figure out how things look and adjust picture settings. I was also able to stream my 4K Blu-ray rips of my personal collection, which is set up on a Plex server in the theater room pretty easily by just downloading the Plex app and logging in. I mean, I had zero issues playing back movies and TV shows using direct play, which is something that I honestly could just never get to work on a previous display I used to own from a manufacturer that kind of rhymes with Smizio. So I've had the Hisense U7H since the middle of November, and I have really tried to put it through its paces over the past nearly five months now. And in that time, I've constantly come away impressed with what the Hisense U7H can deliver, especially at this price point. Now, it's far from a perfect display, I'm not saying it is, and it has issues that I mentioned throughout this review video, and that does put a damper on an otherwise stellar product, in my opinion. However, the pros, in my opinion, do outweigh the cons, and bang for buck, I'd say the Hisense U7H has become my new de facto standard, so to speak, for those looking for a big screen with great picture quality on a budget. Also, I do wanna take a moment to address a common question or statement, I guess you'd call it that, that came up in the comment section on my previous unboxing video of the Hisense U7H. Now, some viewers did point out that the U8H model, which uses a mini LED setup, is superior to the U7H in terms of picture quality. And while that is certainly 100% true, there is one key limitation to consider here. Currently, the U8H is not available in an 85-inch screen size, so if you're in the market for a larger screen, 
the U7H might be your best option right now. Hisense did announce their new UX line of mini LED displays that are slated for release in 2023, and their 85 inch version of that set looks <laughs> to have some pretty crazy specs. But something to keep in mind, those specs are not going to come cheap, and I can guarantee you right now that you won't be buying the 85 inch UX display for anywhere close to 1800 bucks. Of course, if you're willing to sacrifice screen size for better picture quality and want or need something right now, then the U8H may be the way to go for you, but that's a decision that you'll have to make based on your own needs and preferences. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to give it a like below. If you liked what you saw here in this video, well, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, do you yourself have a Hisense display? Maybe even the U7H or U8H and you wanna let people know about your experience or maybe even something I got wrong in this video? Well, then feel free to comment down below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.